My name is Michelle Nilsson. I'm the assistant principal here at the high school. And it gives me great pleasure to introduce my friend Matt Hawthorne of Hawthorne Learning Solutions. Um, Hawthorne Learning Solutions is located in Bellingham. And we have had several students who have benefited from their test prep services and other services that they offer. Um, Hawthorne's been around for since about 2011-ish. Emma and Matt started their business. Emma was a special education teacher and a principal. Matt has been a teacher from pre-K all the way through graduate school and doing tutoring and things like that. They've worked with over 700 students in Whatcom County. We first met when I wor worked in Bellingham. Um, and they provided a lot of services to middle and high school students. And it's not only test prep that Hawthorne provides, they also do academic coaching, they do executive skill functioning, which parents out there, we know that our teens are always developing those skills and some need a little more, more support than others. Um, they help students who have IEPs and 504 plans, they're great advocates for kids, and they do SAT prep and college essay writing. So we're super excited to have Matt join us tonight and speak with you to kind of kick the event off. Um, so it's my pleasure to introduce my, introduce my friend Matt. Thank you guys for having me tonight. Um, hopefully I'll speak loudly enough so that you can hear me in back. If I don't, just wave your hand and I'll try to increase the volume. And um, I'm kind of going to do this in the only format that I know how, which is telling you all a story, um, or at least starting with a story. So for the better part of a decade, I was a reporter for the Chilkat Valley News in Haines, Alaska. Actually, I was the reporter. In a town of 2,000 people, nestled way up a fjord at the end of the Inside Passage, it was the only paper in town. Distribution, 1,200. One editor, a part-time ad slash layout designer, and the reporter. My beat ranged from city council and school board meetings to high school sports. Feature stories on raising livestock in brown bear country, to articles about old timers making their bullets by melting down tire weights. It was a great job, but the best part was the downtime in the office and the flow of characters in and out of the newsroom. Salty dog fishermen, amateur meteorologists, grandmothers, artists, store owners, everyone came by to chew the fat. And being Alaskans, they were quirky, independent, tough, and talkative. My editor, Tom, was a classic Alaskan character. Built his own cabin, off the grid, end of a dirt road. He'd argue with the hippies and with the rednecks, hold them to the same standard, and be friends or enemies with them week to week. No one got a free pass. One of the regulars in the office was Pizza Joe, a spoken word poet, sea kayak tour guide, basketball referee, and former pizza shop owner. One winter, Tom and Joe were both looking for work, and a real gravy terrain had come to town, a big public works project, paying Davis bacon wages and hiring. Well, Pizza Joe came from a family that owned a construction and road building company in Ohio. So Tom, who is more familiar with a typewriter than a hammer, decided he and Joe should go to the job interview together. Get two for the price of one, or two for the price of two. But you know, work the system. The plan that was that Tom would talk up his construction experience. He did build his own home after all, even though it was a 12 by 24 shack with 12 volt electricity and no plumbing. And Pizza Joe, well, construction was in his blood. Raised on it big road projects and commercial buildings in the heartland of America. So Tom went in first and did his spiel, and then Joe came in and boldly announced, I'm an ideas man. There went that plan. And this is where it links back to high school and your being here tonight, considering the type of education you are going to pursue and which you are pursuing right now. Whether you're an ideas person or a concrete thinker, this time in life is your opportunity to explore this question and start to figure it out. With your school's move to a four by eight schedule, 
you have the choice to pursue wide-ranging courses on varied subject matter. Experiment and tinker. Explore everything from college and the high school courses like chemistry and pre-calculus to advanced placement courses like AP Calc or AP Government. Delve into courses like horticultural science, animal physiology, or ceramics. You're fortunate to have this vast array of elective choices, which are labs inviting you to probe new subjects, from robotics to biotechnology to cybersecurity and even education. The four most important factors colleges consider when looking at your applications are your grades in college prep courses, the grades in all of your courses or your overall GPA, your SAT or ACT test scores, and the strength of the curricul curriculum that you chose to take. So you have the ability and the need to take advantage of the education offered in your high school. In addition to being able to study broad, disparate fields, you also can create your own education. And as one of the colleges at Western Washington University declares, design your education, design your future. There's no need for you to choose a path right now, but there is a need for you to explore the world through the education that you're offered with. And this means choosing courses wisely, studying broadly, and figuring out what your passions are, your skill sets are, and what your interests might be. Or as Kendrick Lamar says in Good Kid, Mad City, want to reconnect with your elations? The next stop is your station. But this stuff of education and the path to college isn't just course selection and grades, it's learning how to be a student. You're training your brain, literally shaping it. For all the teenagers in the audience, the shape of your brain is still developing. And the frontal lobe where you make decisions, among other things, won't finish forming until you're 24 or 25 years old. That's one of the reasons why you shouldn't be vaping or drinking or doing any other shenanigans, because it stunts your brain development. And just as your frontal lobe is being shaped, you are asked to manage increasingly complex material, information, and demands. How do I know what homework I have in the eight classes that I'm taking? How do I study for a test? How should I chunk up this essay or lab report so that I'm not trying to complete it the night before it is due? Navigating these questions and knowing what to do is part of your executive function skills, a key to academic success. Sometimes called the CEO of your brain, executive function skills are defined as the ability to self-manage to be able to accomplish your goals. It also covers staying in control of your emotions and resisting impulses. Now the parents in the room know all about this part of your brain development. Students, this is the training ground for you. If you get a bad grade, email your teachers or talk to them after class. Ask for extra credit or the opportunity to do test corrections. Stay after school for homework help or seek out a tutor. Self-advocacy is another executive skill. If you have anything to do for school or outside of school, put it in your planner. If you don't have a planner, get one. If you're not sure how to study for a test, ask a teacher. Being resourceful is also part of this brain development. And for all the students in the room, you're likely going to be challenged with executive function skills. Not just because your brain is still being shaped, but also because you are coming of age during the digital revolution and screen time, the effects of which are just starting to be understood. Every time your phone pings, that you get a like on your Instagram or a hit on your Snapchat, you're getting a small shot of serotonin a habit-forming little substance produced by your body and received by your brain. What is this doing to you socially, to your mental health, to your education? 
You all are the guinea pigs of this grand societal experiment. But the preliminary numbers don't look good. As teens are showing increased rates of anxiety, depression, and other mental health issues. As one Silicon Valley techie said about screens, on the scale between candy and crack cocaine, it's closer to crack cocaine. So as you try to do your homework and learn, you or your parents should put away your phone. Consider turning off the Wi-Fi and let you start to train your brain for deep, sustained focus and engagement. Finally, as you explore the breakout sessions tonight and start to consider your academic future, know that there are very concrete, real factors in this process. Finances, geography, society. These are factors to consider very strongly, especially as you narrow a field of schools that you hope to apply to. But the earlier you start thinking about it, the more opportunities you have and you should feel free to range far and wide in your exploration. If you are hearing this and feeling like you are already behind, do not feel that way. It's never too late. Adam Steltzner, who is NASA's lead engineer on the recent Mars rover, was a school dropout. After spending his teenage years skateboarding and in punk bands, he was driving home from a gig one night and noticed that Orion was in a different place in the sky than it had been earlier, while the Big Dipper hadn't moved. This moment led him to take courses at a community college. And several degrees and hundreds of STEM courses later, he's literally designing spacecrafts. It's an amazing story, but what does it really boil down to? I think it boils down to that he was paying attention. And he wanted to figure things out. That core way of thinking, observing and asking why, is at the root of your educational quest. It was a simple observation of the night sky that led him to where he is today. The ultimate goal for all of us is to be lifelong learners. There are abstract and concrete reasons for this. Why does it matter that you attend college after high school? It has been shown by numerous studies that post-secondary education leads to higher salaries, longer working lives, increased quality of life, and on the societal level, a more just and equal country in which to live. My own educational journey was incredibly varied. I started off college with an Army ROTC scholarship and studying pre-med and graduated as a civilian with a BA in English. I've held jobs ranging from teaching to slinging fish and chips on the state fair circuit, river raft guiding to working as a bookstore clerk, writing to landscaping. Along the way, I got a master's in English, and there were two constants in my life, reading and writing. This desire to learn more about the world around me is what was underlying my quest. And on a personal level for you, I hope your education will lead you to a job that you enjoy, a life you want to lead, and a passion and interest in the world around you. Whether that's studying the science of snow and wind or the arc of a basketball, learning about the art, culture, or history of your region, or the economics and laws of trans-border trade, education is truly enrichment. And by the way, both Tom and Pizza Joe got that job, and their prized piece of work was a box they built to cover a generator, which they constructed entirely out of two by fours. Thank you.